The sysinternal suite from Microsoft is actually a great set of utilities, and we're going to take a look at one of those utilities now. So I'm going to go to the S drive here, and then I'm looking for CFDI 345, which is where we have all of the goodies. Sysinternals is the directory where you can find this. You can see that there are a lot of utilities there. Getting familiar with the sysinternals utilities is a really good idea. We're just going to take a look at one of them today. So what we're going to look at is the Process Explorer. And we're going to run that. Now what we get here, and I'm going to open it up so you can see it a little bit better, is we get a list of all of the processes running on the system. Now you can also see the amount of CPU here, and then we've got some information about the memory that's being used. So we've got private bytes and working set. We're not really going to get into what those mean specifically. What you will see, though, is if I mouse over one of these, we'll get a little tooltip that pops up that gives us some additional information. So we've got the command line, and then we've got services that are associated with it. Now if I scroll down here, let's just find something that's maybe a little bit interesting. And we're going to go into, actually, let me do this. So I'm going to open up Internet Explorer. And then I need to find that here once it has popped up. So you'll see this is actually a parent-child view or a tree view. So pretty much everything that you are going to be interacting with is going to be under the win in it process because that's the parent process for everything that shows up in user land here. So we're going to see iExplore right there. So let me right click on this and then we can get the properties. And you can see the image. This is where it comes from. This is the path that it was launched from, the command line. So this is actually how it was run. And the current directory is the desktop. So if we go to performance, we'll get information about the CPU usage. I can get a performance graph. Now, if I go to threads, I'm going to get a list of the threads that are associated with it. This is sort of, you can think of these, if you're not familiar with threads, you can think of these as sub-processes. So the process is iExplore, and then it kind of breaks it out into a number of other tasks. And all of those sort of run independently through the processor. So we've got threads here, TCP IP. These are all of the network connections that are associated with this particular process, which is really helpful and useful. We've got security information in terms of who owns it and the privileges that it has, environment variables, and this is the actual job. And then we've got the strings that are associated with this particular process. So these are all of the human readable chunks of text that come out of the particular image that is in memory here. So we've got a lot of the calls to dynamic link libraries. We've got the process calls and the names of the individual methods that are being called. And in here, you should also see the list of the DLLs. So these are all of the human readable strings that are associated with this particular process. So we can do other things with this as well. I could create a memory dump that I could then do some analysis on if I had the right tools. I can kill the process, restart it, and of course, I could also run this through VirusTotal, which would tell me whether it is a virus or not. But again, Process Explorer is a really useful tool to go digging into what a process in memory actually looks like and what it is doing while it's running.